Did you think at all about coming here when you were offered the job? You have a, a big reputation, a growing reputation, and you're putting it on the line for a club that um, a lot of people think he's not doing very well. It's a bit of a risk for you. I don't see it as a risk. I think uh, this club uh, has a, a great history. And now, yeah, let's make a future. And I'm really excited to do that with um, the people around eh, who are in the club. We bring some new people in, in the staff. Um, we will analyze the squad and we will go from day to day. Eh, work hard, 100% committed, and then I'm sure we will get a success. 10 out of 10 for Eric for saying all the right things when he met the media on Monday. We even heard from Avram Glazer, courtesy of Sky Sports News, promising that Ten Hag will be backed by the football club. We've always spent the money on players, said Glazer, but are we really equipped to knock City and Liverpool off their perch, looking down on the rest of us under our current regime? Yesterday at Old Trafford, I was assured by a senior figure at Manchester United that the Glazers will do everything they can to make United great again. But will that include selling the club, I wonder? I'll come back to that thought in just a moment. I don't doubt the Glazers do want success on the pitch. Without it, our brand is damaged and falling behind our noisy neighbours who were promising more silverware when they paraded their latest Premier League triumph shortly after Ten Hag finished speaking. Champions in the last four out of five seasons is a type of domination we've not seen since Sir Alex Ferguson ruled supreme. I do remember saying after Fergie retired that this was our doomsday scenario, watching Klopp go to Liverpool and making the Merseysiders great again and allowing Guardiola to go to City when he previously said he wanted the United job. So it's no surprise to me that right now we're living our worst nightmare. Even our legends took a beating at the weekend at the hands of our enemies from Merseyside. I was there to watch Man United heroes beaten 3-1 by Liverpool in the Legends of the North showdown. The good news was we did raise £1.3 million for charitable causes supported by our Manchester United Foundation. And that's absolutely brilliant. Our fans are truly amazing. A crowd of just under 50,000 made us proud and it was great to see so many young faces at Old Trafford because that's our future fan base. But we need our first team to be top guns on the pitch too and all eyes now are on Eric Ten Hag. The component is that um, I have, have a good feeling with the people around. I have a good feeling from the meetings. Uh, um, we have a plan and now it's about to get the plan done, uh, to get it into process, uh, to cooperate, um, to be consistent in our plan. And when we have good people around with uh, the right connection of the right commitment, uh, we will achieve the success we want to do. The first impressions of Eric Ten Hag are impressive. Congratulations to Ed Woodward's successor, Richard Arnold, on making this appointment. I've been encouraged by the changes we've seen since Woodward departed. It feels like we're now trusting football people to make football decisions. When Avram Glazer was asked if Ten Hag is the right man, his response was this. That's why we hired him. He'll do a great job. For that to happen, the Glazers must make the funds available that Ten Hag needs to do that job. He needs the right team around him for recruitment and transfer negotiations. But if that all happens, does it mean that all is forgiven and we're happy for the Glazers to carry on? Never say never, I always say. This is a positive attempt to fix our football club and success on the pitch would surely ultimately silence all the Glazers' critics. But, and there is a but, it feels like this is all a distraction. I desperately want Ten Hag to be our saviour. I'm optimistic things will improve drastically and perhaps even much quicker than many people are expecting with our new Dutch manager in charge. Confirmation that former England manager Steve McLaren and Dutchman Mitchell van der Gager joining Ten Hag's coaching team feels positive. But how far can we really go without new owners with deeper pockets? Most of you, I'm sure, have seen my interview with Michael Knighton calling for regime change, urging investors to come forward and fans to unite 
behind a consortium to buy the football club. And we will get a new regime change because at the end of the day, John, everything is for sale. We've fallen so far behind our rivals, I don't believe the current owners can restore us back to where we want to be. So, while I'm praying that Ten Hag delivers his long-term plan for our football club, I'm urging Michael Knighton to keep talking to investors. And that I know he's doing. When there's progress to report, we'll keep you updated. Meantime, I'd like to say we are encouraged by the overwhelming positive comments from supporters all around the world who want Michael Knighton to talk on behalf of the fans when it comes to leading a consortium. But I think we need to hear some public declaration of support from official fan groups and fan channels who in this modern world are so influential. To bring big investors to the table, we need unity. And as Michael Knighton says, we have to speak with one voice. So please watch the full interview if you've not done so already. Spread the word and let's try to find new owners with the financial muscle to help Eric Ten Hag deliver his vision for Manchester United. Ian Lady from the Daily Mail. Um, there's a feeling in English football that nobody else will win the Premier League until the Klopp Guardiola cycle is over and one of them or both of them decide to leave. Do you agree? Do you agree with that? Does everybody else have to wait? In this moment, I, I admire them. I them both. Uh, they play in this moment really fantastic football, both uh, Liverpool and Man City. But you will always see uh, um, that yeah, there are, uh, an era can come to an end. And I'm looking forward to battle with them. And I've, I'm sure all the other in the Premier League, uh, all the clubs will want to do that. But can that era come to an end before they decide to leave? I think, yeah. 